Welcome to worship at Mount Sinai Congregational Church, a united church of Christ. Whoever you are, wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Let us pray. Gracious and holy God, we gather this day. We gather this day wherever we are for worship. We gather to offer our words and our silence, our prayers and our praise, and even our very selves to that vision of a compassion greater than our own, to that life that is more full of love than we could ever imagine. And so we ask you to be with us in this time of worship and throughout our days. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. A reading from Romans chapter 7, verses 15 through 25. I do not understand my own actions, for I do not do what I want, but I do the very thing I hate. Now, if I do what I do not want, I agree that the law is good. But in fact, it is no longer I that do it, but the sin that dwells within me. For I know that nothing good dwells within me, that is, in my flesh. I can will what is right, but I cannot do it. For I do not do the good I want, but the evil I do not want is what I do. Now if I do what I do not want, it is no longer that I do it, but sin that dwells within me. So I find it to be a law that when I want to do what is good, evil lies close at hand. For I delight in the law of God in my inmost self, but I see in my members another law at war with the law of my mind, making me captive to the law of sin that dwells in my members. 
wretched man that I am, who will rescue me from this body of death? Thanks be to God through Jesus Christ our Lord. This week's reading is from Matthew chapter 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. But to what will I compare this generation? It is like children sitting in the marketplace and calling to one another. We played the flute for you and you did not dance. We wailed and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The son of man came eating and drinking, and they say, look, a glutton and a drunkard, a friend of tax collectors and sinners, yet wisdom is vindicated by her deeds. At that time, Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and the intelligent and have revealed them to the infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Let us pray. Gracious God, your word became flesh and dwelt among us full of grace and truth. Let your word now dwell within us. Let us not simply be hearers of your word, but doers of your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Grace and peace to you this morning. Grace and peace. How are you? I'm fine. Isn't that how we greet one another? That's the polite way of greeting. Now, some people have their own way of doing it. How are you doing today? Oh, I'm great. How are you? I love that particular greeting. And you know who you are. And sometimes we go, oh, I'm fine. And fine just really means, well, fine. I'm okay. I'm doing all right. And sometimes fine means freaked out, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. F-I-N-E, fine. Now, I'm in church, so I used freaked out. You can translate it however you need to and offer whatever substitutions make sense. But these days, if we're honest, how many of us would answer the question, how are you with tired, worn down, exhausted, frazzled? It's a hard time right now. Caring for our families in the time of COVID is tiring. Caring for people we cannot go and see and hug and hold hands with wears us down. Working from home is exhausting. The only thing more tiring is doing all the things we have to do to go into work and to work there. Schooling from home is wearing down parents and it's wearing down kids and it's killing the teachers. They've had to switch everything they do and all the ways they connect with children and try to do it through a camera. That's impossible. It's impossible to have the same connection through a camera that we do in person. If going to work is tiring and working from home is tiring, losing a job in this time is even more exhausting. Losing a job at any time is terrifying, and it's a full-time job to get a job. But during this time especially, so much harder. Grieving loved ones right now is much more difficult than it was before we started practicing physical distancing. Grieving has always been difficult. Now it's even more so for so many. Even being the church is exhausting right now. 
because trying to keep physical distance and wear masks and do all the things we need to do to take care of ourselves and to care for our neighbors when the rest of the country wants to go back to normal, when people seem to be indifferent to the consequences, it feels like sandpaper on the soul. In Texas, people stormed the state capitol after COVID cases spiked. The governor shut down the bars and the protesters came with the chance of bar lives matter. We're trying to care for those most at risk and for our health care workers and people cannot get a drink together in public with no distance and no masks. It's tiring. We're carrying the weight of decades of our society degrading the voices of science and of the needs of a beloved community that is bigger than just us. We're bearing the burden not only for ourselves, but also for our neighbors, and it is wearing us down. This is exhausting to me. I can't imagine how exhausting it is to you. Perhaps I can imagine. Perhaps we do understand a little bit of each other's exhaustion. In a recent Zoom meeting, talking about worship, talking about, well, what if we do this? What if we do that? Can we possibly, how about that? What was so evident was the lament, the pain of not being able to be together in that same space. Like I said of teachers and children, the physical connection, the energetic connection we have with one another when we are Together, whether it's in worship or sipping coffee or talking about what happened this past week or whatever it is, not having those connections made us want to cry. But I think we all tried to keep a brave face for one another because I think if one of us started, when would we stop? We want to find ways to cheat this virus because it has cheated us out of graduations and funerals and birthday parties and the gathering of friends and family in church or at breakfast or wherever it is. We're tired. They can call to us in the marketplace like, the reading in the gospel says, hey, we're playing the music, why aren't you dancing? We're too tired to dance. There's several things wearing on us and they're doing so all at once. Maybe not all of these apply to all of us, but see if these are familiar. People are getting away with stuff we don't think we can get away with. Some people are gathering in large crowds with no masks, no distance, and not getting sick. I don't want anyone to get sick, but there's something in this that does not feel fair. And one of the things human beings have never been good at forgiving is people getting away with something we don't think we could get away with. We're not good at forgiving that. Another one is vigilance is exhausting. Trying to do all the steps every time when we go out, when we go shopping, when we do this, when we do that, it's exhausting. Maintaining physical distance means a trip to the store which might have been relaxing or might have already been a burden and a chore now means we do it with our head on a swivel to make sure we're keeping distance from people. Staying home wears us down. I can be as introverted as anyone I know, but even I am ready to stand in line for something just so I'm around other people in a different space. I hate standing in lines, but I almost want to right now just to have people around me just so I can say, 
Well, this isn't moving very fast, is it? Those things we do with other people in line to commiserate with one another. Another thing is caring about other people is wearying. I'm not just meaning family and friends and church family. I know how we care about each other in this circle, and it's amazing. But I mean caring in the way our congregation cares about society, cares about social justice, cares about racial injustices in our nation, cares about the poor, cares about the food vulnerable, cares about the COVID vulnerable and the systems vulnerable, that caring can be overwhelming when times are normal, and these are not normal times. It's even more overwhelming now. Another piece is compassion is hard. It really is. A political figure said they were going to the president's recent rally. And they said, they're not going to wear a mask. They're not going to enforce masks. Americans are fed up. And that same political figure just recently got diagnosed with COVID and is in the care of doctors back where they're from. Now, it is easy to be bitter. It is easy to be snarky. It is easy to gloat. It is easy to feel vindicated. And I've done all of those. The problem is we're not called to be bitter or snarky. We're not called to gloat. We're not called to to feel vindicated. I've had to confess to God my own easy anger at someone defying common sense ideas and then facing the consequences. We're not called to those other things. We're called to compassion, and compassion is hard, especially in moments like these. I think we're also worn down by the realization that, quote, normal, unquote, as we have assumed it to be, has never really been normal. We have witnessed the exposure of the racism and the white supremacy, the use of wealth to rig the system, and so many injustices in this time that previously we didn't see or we didn't want to see. Or we avoided looking at them too closely. Or we were too busy day to day to notice them. Or we just didn't want to know. The problem is they've always been here. The problem is these are not new. But right now, it's really hard to look away. It's hard not to see them. It's hard not to say, okay, this is how we are. These six things are wearing us down, and there are more, I'm sure. It's hard to get out of bed some mornings. Now, I'm a coffee drinker. I'm one of those who waking up before the coffee's done is rough anyway. But these days especially, and I'm sure I'm not the only one. However, there is an offer in the gospel. There is an invitation in the gospel. There is a welcome, if you will, in the gospel. And it says, come to me, all you that are weary, all you who are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Isn't that what we need? Not rest, for the, not rest like a nap in the middle of the day where then you've gotten too long a nap and you stay up late at night. But rest for the soul. Not rest like one of those nights where you barely get to sleep and the dreams are so full that you wake up almost as tired as when you went to bed. Not rest like that, but rest for the soul. Rest for the fullness of who we are as people, as 
messy human beings as whole selves. Come to me, all you who are weary and are carrying heavy burdens. And I will give you rest. There is still a call to compassion and to justice. We still do the work of the church. We still care for those we know and we love. We still care for those we don't know, but who work in the healthcare system, those we don't know, but who are immunocompromised, those we don't know, but need our care even if that's just us taking care of ourselves so we don't overburden the system. We still care for the creation God has entrusted to us. But we are not alone in this calling. Here's how we can get some of our rest. We have a cloud of witnesses we are surrounded by. Some of you may remember when I told the choir, I could sing a note longer than they could. And I challenged them. I said, come on, choir, let's do this. And we all picked a note and we sang it. And they sang much longer than I could. Here's the deal. I knew. I knew they could sing longer than I could because there are more of them and they can stagger breathe. They can take a breath They can let others carry the note while they get the breath that they need. That is part of what it means to be surrounded by a cloud of witnesses. No one person has to carry the whole thing because God does the heavy lifting and we help. And we help one another and we help our world of neighbors. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, Jesus says, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Rest for your souls. Rest for your soul. Be still and know that God is God and find rest for your soul. Thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to put the words on the screen. And I invite you to sing along with me. I'm going to sing one of our favorites. And I want you to sing with me if you want to. Now, the beauty of this is you, you can hear me, but if you want, you can mute me and just use the words. And if you want to sing loud, if you want to sing strong, if you want to sing soft, if you want to hum, if you want to whatever it is, you and those around you can hear but we're gonna sing together wherever we are. Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me on, let me stand. I am tired, I am weak, I am worn through the storm, through the night, lead me on to the light. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When my way Precious Lord, linger near when my life is almost gone. Hear 
Hear me cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall. Take my hand, precious Lord, lead me home. When the shadows appear, and the night draws near, and the day is past and gone. At the river I stand, guide my feet, hold my hand, Precious Lord, take my hand, lead me home. There's a song in our hymnal. It's called This Is My Song, written in 1934. It was written between the two world wars. The First World War was over. The Second World War was not in full sway. The song was written to celebrate where we live and our country, but also to celebrate the fact that all are God's children. The earth and all that is in it belongs to the Lord. I'm not going to sing this one. I'm going to read this one. And then we, we will pray. This is my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for lands afar and mine. This is my home, the country where my heart is, here are my hopes, my dreams, my holy shrine. But other hearts in other lands are beating with hopes and dreams as true and high as mine. My country's skies are bluer than the ocean. The sunlight beams on clover leaf and pine. But other lands have sunlight too and clover. And skies are everywhere as blue as mine. Oh, hear my song, O God of all the nations, a song of peace for their land and for mine. Let us pray. Gracious God, on this day of this weekend where we celebrate the independence of our country. We do so asking you to guide us. We celebrate the independence of our country. We celebrate the accomplishments that have happened because of the people here. And we ask you to remind us that the people here are immigrants, just as our forebears are. We ask you to remind us that our accomplishments have also had terrible consequences, both intended and unintended. That the humanity of some is sacrificed for the sake of others. That the work and labor of some is sacrificed for the income and capital of others. Gracious God, we lift up our nation. We lift up our broken nation, a nation at war with itself in so many ways. Help us to be a voice of peace and a voice of justice, that the peace that we ask for, your peace, would be for all, not just for some.
That the justice we ask for, your justice, would be for all and not just us. Gracious God, we lift up all the weary ways of living these days that we have. We lift up all the troubles, all the uncertainties, all the pain, and we ask you to do what you have always done, which is walk your people through the wilderness. Give us a new way of living with you and with one another. Seek how we might be a part of your life in the world. Gracious God, this work is beyond us. But with you, all things are possible. Including justice and peace. So bless us, Lord, to be your people to offer ourselves again to that beloved community that you seek for us and our world of neighbors. And all this we pray as we lift up the prayers of our hearts and minds in these moments, moments of silence. Holy God, receive our prayer that we pray in Jesus' name, even as we join our voices in the prayer that he taught, using the words on the screen or those closest to our hearts. The prayer that begins, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, last week we celebrated Pride Week. We also celebrated our baccalaureate. And unfortunately, I forgot one. I don't know how it slipped my list. But that is Jesse Owen Stevens Murphy. And so we celebrate his graduation as well. Ask and you shall receive. Seek and you shall find, knock and the door shall be opened to you. Last week, I proposed a challenge to you, a $100 challenge. It's about raising $10,000 to cover part of the painting of our building. The exterior needs some tender loving care and a fresh coat of paint, and we need to cover a $10,000 gap between what we have for that painting and what the cost will be, which at $100 per person or $100 per family or $100 among several families or however it works out, 100 gifts like that, and it's covered. And as soon as we got mail on Tuesday, check had already shown up. Someone had given their $100 towards it. I am so grateful for those who do so right away, and I'm also grateful for those who take their time to think about it and pray about it and say, can we? Should we? I invite your gifts. Not only for the $100 challenge, but also for the ongoing work of the church, making possible what we're doing here, offering worship even as we are not together. I'm grateful for your generosity. I'm humbled by your giving. I'm encouraged by the way this church steps up. 
freely we have received of the gift of life and the gifts of life, gladly let us bring to our church and its wide concerns a portion of the bounty with which we have been blessed. Thank you. gather at the table is to be reminded that in body, in mind, and in spirit, we are a contingent people. We rely on food for our own life, for our own growth. We rely on sunlight. We rely on the work of so many that make possible a meal such as this, even a symbolic meal. We rely on others. We rely on God. So we gather here, wherever you are. We are at the same table wherever yours is located because this is the table God calls us to. This is a table where no one sits at the head, no one sits at the foot, nobody's off at the kitty table. 
whether in your family the kiddie table was the cool place to be or in your family the kiddie table was where you got pushed away so you weren't in on the good conversations. There's no kiddie table. There's just a table and we are all welcome here. All of us. And so we gather. We gather and we remember. We remember all the ways that God has been in our lives and in the lives of those we love. In the lives of those who have blessed us. And we remember the way God has been in our life when others have cursed us. That we would find healing and hope and wholeness such that we might even pray for those who curse us. And we remember God, as Jesus did, that the night he was to be betrayed, he took the bread and in the manner of that supper, he gave thanks for it and then he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And the cup that is poured at the end of the supper, he took it and he poured it and he gave it to them saying, take, drink from this all of you. This is the cup of the new covenant poured out in my blood. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we gather here, we gather here at Christ's table. Let us pray. Holy God, come quickly. Make yourself known to us in these simple gifts, bread and cup. Make your presence known to us and make us your people again. Bless us to know the faith and the hope and the love that comes with the empowerment of your Holy Spirit. That when we go forth from this place, we would be even more who we are, even more your children, knowing even more our connection to you and to one another. Help us receive these simple gifts and help us connect with all your creation. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The body of Christ given for you. Take and eat. The cup of salvation poured out for you. Take and drink. Let us pray. Holy God, we celebrate this day. We celebrate your presence in our lives. We give you thanks for the ways in which you are already at work within us, among us, and through us. Grant us, Lord, the rest our souls need. Grant us, Lord, the energy and the strength and the health to do what is necessary. Grant us, Lord, the patience. Oh, how we hate that word. Grant us the faith to see us through these difficult days to that day when we are together again. This all we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God's countenance be lifted up upon you. May you always know God's peace. Amen and amen.